Hello, everyone. I'm playing with my screen already. Uh, it is the uh, CCO Club webinar number 89. We are going to talk about a topic that I'm excited about because it deals with ICD and the disease process. And this is two of my favorite things to talk about. So it's chronic versus incurable diagnosis in medical coding. How do we deal with that? Uh, when we look at a uh, diagnosis and we're reading what the provider has stated, you know, sometimes there are conditions that are chronic and some are incurable. What's the difference? I don't want to get confused with some other terms that I've set aside. So I've got some examples and we're going to even talk about some of the codes. The first thing we're going to start with is chronic. I went ahead and looked up to see what is the actual CDC state about chronic, the term chronic. And they stated that it's a it's really broadly defined and usually, I wish it had said usually, it's a condition that's going to be a year or more and it requires ongoing medical attention or limited activity of daily living or both. Now, there we don't want to get it confused with some other scenarios and I or, or terms and I'm going to show you that on the next slide and we're going to do a little practice so I encourage you while we're doing that feel free to make comments in the the comment section and uh, what your opinion is and I'll be able to see that and we'll walk through that let me just move this off the screen here uh, chronic diseases when we think of a chronic disease, usually heart disease, cancer, diabetes, those are actually leading causes of death and disability in the United States. Now, when we look at documentation, we cannot assume something is chronic unless the provider states that it's chronic, especially when you have codes for acute and chronic and it'll be in the description. So we know the difference between acute and chronic. Acute is sudden onset, and chronic will be something that usually lasts longer. But just because it doesn't last a year, does it, it, that is not the defining number. Like, okay, they've had this for 12 months exactly, and so now it's considered chronic. No, that's not the case. Only the provider is uh, has the right or ability to state when something is chronic versus not chronic. And it gets confusing confusing for our new coders. Sometimes I have to think, go back and think about it as well. Uh, so I'm trying to think of if a person has asthma, you know, is that chronic or not? It depends. And they can have acute and chronic or acute exacerbations from time and then not have a, an asthma attack for years and years. Does that mean that they're cured? Does that mean it's still chronic? Uh, if they have an acute versus a chronic, does that change the standing diagnosis? Mm. So let's talk about what you need to know. First, it's broad, the term chronic that it doesn't have to last a year. It is usually a year or more if something gets stated as chronic. And third, that the provider is the one that determines whether something is chronic or not. Diabetes, heart disease, stroke, um, arthritis, COPD, those are conditions that are considered chronic. And uh, Tony asks, does this mean documentation must write chronic or is it okay for uh, if provider just indicates the time frame? No, they, the time frame is not going to allow you to state that it's chronic. Now, if you only have a choice between a code that is chronic and acute, 
and it states that the patient has had it for a year, you would use the chronic because it's kind of common sense, right? So if that's what you're asking, absolutely right. However, we don't make assumptions for that provider. We could, uh, well, it depends. You may, you know, you can cr query the provider, but most of the time your provider is going to make a statement that it's chronic. <clears throat> Here's some examples, and I want you to look at these. Let's talk about each one, and then you tell me if they are considered chronic or not. So hypertension, I10. Is that considered chronic? Go ahead and put it in the chat, and I'm curious as to what you feel that it is. Now, with I10, there is several things that can describe it. Uh, essential and primary, of course, benign, uh, malignant. Uh, there's a lot of different um, information that would state that it's chronic. So Alice is saying that it's chronic. Anybody else? Uh, let's see how quickly you guys can type those in. There is a little bit uh, of a delay. Martha says that it's acute. Um, so it, I guess your choices could be chronic, acute, or neither. And what do you think? Tony says yes. Uh, uh, again, let's see. We've got E. Orland, chronic, 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 chronic. High blood pressure would be chronic. And very good. Okay. Now let's now that we've looked at that one, let's go ahead, because on the next screen I have the answers. Uh, J49.9 COPD. Is COPD chronic, acute, or neither? No, it can be short lived, Deborah says. Rachel, I'm going to save your comment and uh, we'll get to that one at the end. Chronic, 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 chronic. Very good. Okay. And in 18.9 CKD, unspecified, so it doesn't give a stage. Would that be chronic, acute, or neither? Okay. Seeing lots of activity. This is great. Now let's move to uh, CHF. I. 50.20 unspecified systolic congestive heart failure, which that would be called CHF systolic is kind of the way we would abbreviate that. Would that be chronic, acute, or neither? Very good. You guys are really hopping. Now let's look at the last one. K58.2 mixed uh, IBS, mixed IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Would it be chronic, acute, or neither? <clears throat> Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. You guys are a fabulous, fabulous, great participation. Okay. Let's break it down. Let's start with I50.20. Now, the reason I say that is because the two that stated they were chronic, well, they're chronic. <laughs> you know, it's in the definition. And that's why I put that in there. So COPD is chronic by name, by definition. And then the other choice was, um, what was the other choice? The, oh, CKD, by definition, chronic kidney disease. Okay, and note that just because a person has a kidney transplant does not mean that they won't still be considered a CKD patient. It may just lower the stage of CKD. If you don't know, they don't actually remove a kidney unless it's got cancer uh, or is diseased to the point that it's harmful and they need to remove it, but they actually just make a pocket and give you a third kidney. Uh, so it raises your ability to flush and therefore you could go from an N1, N18.6 uh, ESRD in stage renal disease to say a CKD3, stage three or two, right? Uh, so it is chronic. And of course the J44.9 is COPD, chronic by name. And 
let's look at I50.20 unspecified CHF systolic and what's interesting about this and the reason I picked it is because I wanted you <laughs> Alice's aha uh, is that there's three choices you've got 0.21 acute 0.22 chronic and you have 0.23 acute on chronic so what does that tell you CHF unspecified means that you haven't specified whether it's acute or chronic or acute on chronic so therefore CHF is actually what not defined as chronic because they could have acute CHF and it could be due to something else uh, you could have chronic CHF I 50.22 and then you could have you could be chronic and have an acute exacerbation is is ultimately what that re means so I wanted you to see if there is the option of acute and a code for chronic and a exact uh, acute on chronic which is not just CHF there's other conditions that have acute on chronic uh, to be aware of that means an unspecified by itself is not considered chronic because it could be acute right you just don't know uh, so do not just assume that CHF is always chronic K58 irritable bowel syndrome IBS look at your options now nothing in their states in the definition unlike CHF that it is considered acute or chronic now we don't use the code set to we use the code set to translate but they don't give us a code for something that doesn't exist now again we could assume that they just don't have a, a, a code for it so k58.8 which is other and other is defined by the code set as hey you have specificity we just don't have a character or a code for it at this time and uh, so you you can't you you that doesn't really fall into the definition of being chronic that means there's other types of IBS that means that it's not with diarrhea with constipation or um, without and uh, mix that it has both right so there's others out there that there's just not a quote built in and we have plenty of options because we haven't used three four five six or seven as a character yet so that may expand someday but as it states nothing in that definition states it's chronic but when you read what cedar sinai states ibs is a long-term chronic condition it can be painful etc etc it doesn't cause lasting harm to your intestines uh, and it doesn't lead to serious disease such as cancer right now there is other conditions that um, uh, constant irritation to the digestive tract could lead to other problems but that doesn't mean that it causes cancer uh, uh, again it is a chronic condition not by definition it's not in the code itself but what is the state well when a person has IBS they can have flares from time to time but that doesn't mean that the IBS goes away when they're not having a flare that means that they if they eat something or whatever triggers them which can be all kinds of things whether it be allergic reactions to something that they ate um, they could have on top of uh, their IBS it could be triggered by uh, lactose intolerance uh, as well as sensitivities to certain foods uh, again it's it's a chronic condition that they suffer from however uh, it's it, once you had IBS it doesn't go away it just doesn't always flare up okay and uh, my my number two daughter which is number three child she's had IBS since she was an infant and it's something that she she doesn't have Crohn's disease or uh, 
uh, some other things, but it's it, she has a mix. She's in a K58.2, and it's quite miserable a lot of the time. But as an adult now being 22 years old, she knows how to deal with it. And uh, so to answer the question, is IBS chronic? Yes, it is. How do we know that? Because we know the disease process. It doesn't tell us in the code. So uh, unlike the CHF, we have a code built in definition. However, the disease process tells us that that's what it is. The provider tells us that it's chronic. And so that's our understanding of chronic. Now let's move to non-curable, which would be classified as incurable. We have verbiage that could be used to substitute incurable. Uh, sometimes you will hear advanced stage of the disease. It's a progressive disease. Terminal and life limiting all could be synonymous with incurable. And the best way is to think about uh, uh, something that most people are familiar with, with the disease process, uh, that it, one particular type of disease doesn't mean that there isn't areas within it that are curable and incurable. So I picked STDs. And the way that you look at that is we have incurable or we have curable STZ, STDs because they can be treated, especially with antibiotics. If you've ever read anything about World War I and World War II, uh, this was a problem <laughs> with our, our, our uh, military going overseas and stuff. And they actually were, the military was some of the leaders in uh, education and studying STDs because of that. Uh, so the type that are curable, Syphilis, gonorrhea, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and trichomosis, uh, which that's not exactly how you, there's some more uh, valves in there. Uh, but what's incurable? Now, notice all of the ones that are incurable are viruses. Hepatitis B, herpes, and uh, uh, that would be herpes simplex virus, HSV. HIV is a virus and HPV, which is human papillova virus. So most of you can, um, oh, well, these were sexually transmitted diseases. There are other types of hepatitis that aren't sexually transmitted. So that's, we, we don't want to classify hepatitis all in one, but hepatitis B can be uh, transmitted sexually. So therefore it's considered an STD. So don't get confused there. And the, the thing about these is that they are all viruses. And then once you get them, you can never get rid of them. They stay in your system forever. The best example to give is H HIV because most of us have been at this point, especially if you're in the coding world, educated on what HIV is. It means you're, the, you're uh, positive for the HI virus, the HIV virus, right? And it's in your system. Nowadays, the medication and the treatments for HIV is amazing. But once it's in you, it's there. It's not going anywhere. It's incurable. Can you postpone the next stage of HIV, which is AIDS, which means it's opportunistic. Uh, it has developed into an opportunistic uh, reaction. Yeah, so you can. And in fact, I was watching an ad that came up on TV the other day with a new medication that was stating that when you're on this medication, you may be able to not pass on the virus, uh, which uh, kind of blew me away. I've never heard of that before. So again, the signs and symptoms were pretty brutal though. <laughs> I, I always remember the Saturday Night Live episode where they made fun of all the signs and symptoms that you know go along with that. So again, HIV can turn into AIDS, but HIV is still incurable. You have it forever. Is it terminal? It doesn't have to be, right? Uh, the uh, None of those on that list are terminal. They may not k 
kill you. Unlike some types of conditions that are terminal. Terminal means it will kill you. Uh, incurable is not synonymous with terminal. And it just means it can't be fixed or healed, but you could actually live with it. Uh, HIV, people are living with it and they can die of other things. HIV lowers the immune system and makes you more susceptible, but that doesn't mean that it's a death sentence like it used to be. Uh, but again, don't get the, the verbiage confused. Now, what about cancers? If a person has a cancer, we know that we can use a history code to state that that cancer has been eradicated, that the patient no longer is getting treatment, that the patient no longer has that cancer. That means they have a history of, you know, pancreatic cancer, which probably isn't going to happen because that usually kills you. Uh, let me think of another one. A prostate cancer, a history of prostate cancer, a history of breast cancer. Uh, those are cancers that can be eradicated. Uh, they would maybe go so far as some of those cancers as to say you've been cured of your cancer if you've gone past five years, right? But there are actually some cancers that are incurable. So let's talk about that. They don't like to use the term incurable because that makes people feel bad. So they use the term remission and that would be uh, liquid cancers. They can go into remission. However, they can never know if the cancer cells are not still living in your body, which they're, you know, 99.9% .9 sure that it is still living in your your body. So let's talk about remission. Remission's definition means that the signs and symptoms of your cancer are reduced. Does that mean that you don't have cancer? No, that doesn't mean that. It means that you don't have to have constant ongoing treatment right now. Is there a possibility that you may have to have treatment in the future? Yes, there is. May you is it possible that you will never have to have treatment again? Yes, it's true. However, if you have a cancer that can go in remission, that means that it might not be terminal, right? It's not going to kill you. If you have brain cancer and they cannot operate it and it's growing at a rapid rate and they know exactly what type of brain cancers do this, they can identify them via pathology and measure size of growth and time and so on. And then they can definitive say, definitively say, this is terminal. This, you will succumb to this brain cancer or this you know XYZ whatever type uh, because they can't control the signs and symptoms and they cannot cure it and uh, and there's there's nothing they can do ultimately it's terminal um, where does cancer fall in the new ENM number and complexity of problems addressed mm, it well, it's not any different than what it was before uh, because not all cancers are equal. Uh, you could have a, uh, a, you know, an 85 year old man with prostate cancer that, it, that they've tracked for a year and it has not progressed to, uh, has not grown at all. And the complexity of, and they're going to just watch and wait. The, Medical decision making and complexity of that is not very high. It's kind of a no brainer. Men live long enough, they're going to get prostate cancer. It's just a fact. You know, are they going to go in and do anything about it? Well, if it's not growing enough to become problematic with signs and symptoms or life threatening, then medical decision making is really low. However, if you have a 45 year old man that has uh, prostate cancer that's rapidly growing and the signs and symptoms have affected his daily way of life, uh, and you've got and you have to consider his past history uh, uh, 
uh, if he wants, you know, impotence, <laughs> if he goes in and has surgery, uh, what kind of treatments can they do? What kind of medicines should they watch and wait? Uh, you know, that's different. That is a lot higher complexity in medical decision making. So there is not uh, a one way or another. Are skin cancers, leukemia and lymphoma liquid cancers? Yes, they are. Skin cancer, though, is not, I don't think it's considered a liquid cancer. Skin cancer is not because skin is actually an organ and you can have skin cancer in one area and not have it all over the body. Whereas leukemia and lymphoma, you do, it, it's uh, systemic throughout the body. So remission can be partial or complete remission. If it's um, complete remission, that means they've controlled the signs and symptoms, usually over five years. Now, you will have some doctors go out and say that, uh, that the cancer is uh, cured because they've gone five years in remission, but uh, I, I've never heard a doctor say to a uh, what they may say that to a patient but I've never heard them tell another medical professional that I guess uh, one uh, oncologist told me when we were doing a lecture that he said you know liquid cancers which are going to be which I've got it on the next screen uh, those are there's just no way of knowing it's not incurable it's still floating out around um, Jane says that my job, cancer active or occurred in five years, add on medical record. Yeah, that's right. That's pretty much a protocol that that you do. Um, so, you know, good good point to, to make, Jane. Uh, now, complete remission is defined as there is no signs and symptoms, in, uh, cancer in response to treatment. So they've tr done something, and that, but but it doesn't actually mean that it's cured a um, diminishing, diminishing of seriousness or intensity of the disease or pain, a temporary recovery is uh, uh, what remission is defined as. So let's look at those liquid cancers. They are anything that's found in body fluid. So that would be blood, bone marrow, and lymphatic. So bone cancer would be considered a, a liquid cancer because your bone marrow produces red blood cells and therefore it's considered liquid. And you wouldn't think that because you probably are telling yourself that, well, bones are hard. Well, yeah, but the inside of the bones aren't. That is not. Uh, Eileen asks, what's S? backslash SX, that stands for signs and symptoms. Yeah. Uh, okay, so leukemia, it is the white blood cells that are not acting pop properly. Uh, bone marrow usually affects white blood cells and red can affect red blood cells. And the lymphatic system is just like a massive creek system throughout your whole body. I think of your uh, red blood cells flowing through your arteries is like a river and the lymphatic system, you know how there's always a creek system around rivers? That's what I consider the lymphatic system. Uh, okay, and let's see, uh, other types of cancers, there's no cure for leukemia. Now, I do know a person that had childhood leukemia, and she's older than me, so she's in her 60s, early 60s, and she was, um, and at that time, uh, so you'd say 50 years ago, it wasn't curable. Uh, well, it's not curable now, but, but children were dying of leukemia. If you had childhood leukemia, it was a death sentence. You weren't going to reach adulthood, and she was in a special study, and um, and I can't remember how many people are in the study, but let's say there were 20 people, 20 kids that were part of the study. All of them succumbed except for her. She was the only one with this new research treatment. She survived and she's happy and healthy still today. And I see her often. And it was a big deal. She was the one that survived kind of. And, and uh, because of that, it changed that death sentence for, you know, that terminal uh, 
illness into something that, hey, you can you can live with this. Now, because she has been uh, without leukemia for that many years, uh, going from a child and now she's in her 60s, would you say that she was cured? Uh, you know, most people say, yes, she's been cured of leukemia. But the fact is that she still has those abnormal cancer cells in her body. Is it ever going to do anything? Who knows, right? Uh, but it's an amazing thought process to actually know somebody that was the the lone survivor, kind of, you know, it was quite an amazing thing. Uh, so again, uh, leukemia can experience remission and it can go into complete remission and then later it can uh, flare back up. I guess the flare may not be the right word. Uh, those abnormal cells can kick in again. You know, uh, Jane said, isn't there a diagnosis code for anemia cause of cancer? Absolutely, there is. You are correct, Jane. Uh, a lot of cancers, uh, uh, a lot of cancers, different types of cancers can cause anemia. So there's a code for that. The treatment for cancers can cause anemia. So there's a code for that. And in fact, uh, are, there is special guidelines. So you need to look at your ICD-10 guidelines and see the, uh, an, that's why you have like five pages in the index for anemia codes. But the guidelines will tell you, is the patient being treated for anemia that's due to the cancer? Or are they being treated for the anemia the, or the, the cancer uh, uh, and not the anemia. And the, the codes are kind of funny because it's the opposite of what all the other codes say. You, it, the coding for anemia is very unique. In fact, maybe we need to, I know a long time ago we did a video on that, some education on that, but it might be time to revisit the anemia codes because there is a lot of them. All right. Um, thanks, Jane, for bringing that up. So I think I've covered liquid cancers. I urge you to go ahead and look into more information about liquid cancers and the codes that are involved in liquid cancers versus the other types or it's either called solid or liquid cancers you have a choice and these are the ones blood bone marrow and lymphatic are liquid cancers everything else is considered a solid cancer All right so let's talk about what sums this up what do you need to know about chronic and incurable diagnoses. You need to know the disease. You need to know the disease process, just like Jane mentioned with anemia. You need to know the disease process and uh, is it a liquid cancer versus a solid cancer. Uh, you also need to know the code description. Chronic uh, pulmonary obstructive disease, COPD, chronic is written into the code description and uh, but CHF can be acute or chronic right uh, so know the code description know the disease process and I would even go so far as to say even for something like CHF not only can it be acute chronic acute on chronic but you can tell where the heart failure what part of the heart is failing systolic diastolic systolic on diastolic so you could have technically acute on chronic systolic on diastolic chf you know so it's amazing you know, the what you can code by knowing the code description and thus knowing the disease process but ultimately who is the deciding factor on something that is chronic and incurable it's the provider. The provider makes the choice. And as you've seen, several people have already uh, commented that, well, the doctor said that after 10 years, you can make it a history of uh, for cancer. If the doctor said that, so, you know, so be it. They're the ones that make the decision. We translate that and we help them choose the proper code based on our knowledge of the code set 
and the code descriptions. That's that's our job is to translate that information. They make the decisions. We let them know the codes that are available to them that might be applicable so that we can always get to the highest specificity for the, the story that's being told. So we can show the severity and the complexity of their patient and their patient population that they're dealing with. Good stuff. Any questions that you might have? Whip, those, whip these doctors to think ink so can code better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's true. The, the doctors are not trained to code. They are the medical experts. We translate. But now, with, you know, if they're using Epic, Cerner, or whatever, they have to pick the code. But they don't know the details. So, you know, again, we're, we're there to, to help them to do that. Our role has morphed into more of an auditing and, and we can't do as well of a job if we don't know the disease process and we don't have the code description and the code set really well defined in our knowledge base. All right. Any other questions for you guys? Excellent. If this with our CCO club questions. If you have a topic that you would like us to discuss, to discuss, you can absolutely let us know. But I encourage you to consider joining the CCO club. It's real easy to find. Just go to cco.us forward slash club and not, you know, this conversation will be continued over in the club. Uh, the, the club members will be able to uh, get the slide deck, see the transcript, reference the video, as well as have that follow-up conversation that leads to more education for all of us. So I encourage you guys to check that out. Go to the CCO Club. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.